A few years back, I was part of a team of YouTubers who would explore interesting places all over the world. That was the dream I had always wanted for myself. To have adventures while hanging out with friends and making videos for the world. I'd call it the perfect life. That was all until we had the brilliant idea to go explore an abandoned oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, in a sense, it really was a great idea for a video. A place no one online had gone to, with incredibly eerie visuals, and apparently it even had a story to go along with it. The rig was abandoned for months, with no explanation as to why. I mean, if that isn't a perfect viral video, I don't know what is. So the four of us got a small boat with the intention to go and dock on the oil rig and investigate it. We would also probably stay the night if we could. We put the boat in the ocean at around 3 p.m. and must have been driving for at least a half hour before I could even see the rig in the distance. Such a strange man-made structure, just looming over a sea of blue and nothingness. A place in which I now know mankind doesn't belong. There was an enormous zigzag stairway, which extended about 11 stories down the side of the structure. As we pulled up, I started to understand the gravity of the situation we were getting ourselves into. No one had been on this structure in months, and there could potentially be some very dangerous things inside. I suppose that was part of the job, though. We tied the boat up next to the stairway and started climbing. Justin went first and took off to a running start. He thought it would be funny if he was able to make it all the way up without stopping to walk. I was definitely not on board with that. Then there was Tara and Jacob behind him. They had a boom mic and one of the cameras, and were just trying to film as much stuff as they could as they ascended. I was the last to climb up, and decided to take my time. I had the sleeping bags, a tent, and cooking supplies, so I guess I was a little slower because of that too. Before I knew it, they were almost all the way up the thing, and I was still only about halfway. That was when I spotted something bubble up from beneath the water. It was just a giant air bubble that floated up to the surface, but it was weird that there didn't seem to be any visible source for it. Anyways, I brushed it off and continued up the stairs. Once I got to the top, I really started to notice the height. I mean, this thing was massive. It was as if I was standing on top of a skyscraper, over the water. We started to explore the thing, and it was much cooler than I had originally thought it would be. There was an old helipad, a lookout tower, and a bunch of offices and stuff. But the thing we came across that really intrigued me was the old crew's quarters. There were still things left from when the crew was living aboard. We found old photos, books, and even some personal belongings like clothes and toiletries. But something was off. It seemed like there was a lot of things left that would have normally been taken. There was a half-eaten sandwich, a brand new pair of shoes, wallets with cash still inside. However, we brushed it off as just something that was kind of weird and kept moving through the rig. As night fell, we set up our tent and sleeping bags on the top deck with the incredible view of the ocean in the distance. The area was dimly lit by the light of our flashlights, and the sound of waves crashing against the rig was the only thing that could be heard. But then, there was something else. A faint but distinct sound, almost like a deep rhythmic humming. It was echoing from somewhere I couldn't quite determine. I looked at the rest of the crew and realized they were all already asleep. So I decided to get up and walk around to try and determine where the mysterious sound was originating from. As I ventured around the top deck, I soon realized the sound must have been coming from over the edge of the rig. Cautiously, I ambled over to the edge and looked out into the black ocean sky lit just by moonlight. Then I heard the sound once again it was almost like the rattling of a deep bass drum, followed by that of a lighter drum. But I still could not pinpoint where it was coming from, at least until I looked at where our boat was docked 
at the bottom of the rig. About 50 yards out, I saw a large object floating in the ocean. It almost looked like a boat, but then I noticed it begin to move in this strange rhythmic way. I ran over to our sleeping area and grabbed some binoculars from one of the bags and went back to the edge. I still to this day find it difficult to describe what it was that I saw out in the ocean. It was some sort of a gelatinous blob, which had taken form in some places and stayed malleable in others. It looked like portions of its skin had taken on the form of other things such as shark fins and jaws. But then I began to notice a distinct feature which made chills run down my spine. There were human faces imprinted in its skin. Human faces with wide eyes and open mouths, as if screaming in terror. I knew immediately that these were the faces of the crew who had gone missing. Then out of nowhere, it began to quickly slither across the top of the water like a snake as it approached the bottom of the rig. It ascended onto the platform we had docked at and began to slowly slide up the stairs. I ran towards my crew in terror, screaming and panicking. I began to explain what was happening, but the rest of the group wasn't really buying it. Then we heard a railing snap as the blob reached the top of the stairs. It was enormous, at least 30 feet long, and now that it was close, I could see that the body had the texture of an octopus. We all looked at each other, frozen, unsure of what to do or even say. Then it suddenly lunged towards us. We all split up and ran in different directions, causing the creature to then showcase another one of its many talents. It split into multiple different sections, each of them going after one of us, blocking the exit stairway with the largest one. I realized we were trapped with no options aside from fighting or jumping to our deaths. At that moment, I remembered what I had been carrying in my bag up the stairs and took off towards it. With one of the slithering sections right on my tail, I reached inside and pulled out a can of lighter fluid we had used to cook our meal, along with a barbecue lighter. I quickly squeezed the can onto the creature and lit it up. The organism squirmed and squealed, slithering back to merge with one of its larger portions. I then ran towards the one which was blocking the stairway and emptied the rest of the fluid onto it, lighting it ablaze. It thrashed about, knocking me back, flinging the lighter fluid out of my hand and off of the rig. I took this opportunity to run down the stairway, which it had slightly moved away from after the burn. Before I went down, I looked back at the rest of my friends. They were all being absorbed into the different sections of the creature, their faces freezing into terrified screams as it covered them. Somehow I was able to get back down to the boat and start it up without it immediately coming after me. When I drove away I looked back and could see the top of the oil rig had caught fire and the creature was slowly slithering back down the stairs towards the ocean. Although I was too far away at that point for it to catch me. I literally just had a compass in the moonlight to get me home and I still kind of can't believe that I made it back. The rest of the night was a blur, but when I got home was when the real frustration began. No one believed what had happened, not even my parents. I mean, who would? I guess they thought I just came up with a story to deal with the traumatic event. When authorities went back out there a couple days later, it seemed that the fire and the creature had cleared up any evidence of my story's validity. I guess all I can hope for is that someone listening will finally believe my story. There is really something that lurks across the top of the ocean out there. And people need to be aware of its existence if they ever want to stop this kind of thing from happening again. Especially because... What happens when it decides to set its sights on land? Hey, it's Mr. Freaky. I hope you all enjoyed that original creepypasta. Go ahead and leave a story idea in the comments and let's discuss them. As always, please subscribe to my channel and like this video, as well as join the Discord if you want to get involved in the community. Have a horrific evening, everyone, and remember to stay spooky, my friends.